Our network is a global network. It is called Urgency International Community Supported Agriculture Network. And community supported agriculture is, of course, producers and consumers. So the key issue, of course, for the producers is that they have a decent life because there is a contractualized agreement between the producers and the consumers and there are shared risks and benefits. So this means that the producers can plan their year. They know how much money they're going to earn. They can plan their crops. And for the consumers, or the eaters as we often call them, it means that they have real direct local access to agroecological, nutritious local food. So there is an overall social benefit of social reconnection and it ensures the real implementation of SDG 8 and decent livelihoods for the producer. And for the consumers, it works on the aspects of nutrition, which is health in the SDGs because we know that we can trust our producers. I think the decade of family farming is extremely important because at global level, we are facing challenges that we have never had to face before. We are facing biodiversity collapse. We are facing climate change and those two are linked. And we are facing the agribusiness that is increasingly trying to destroy small scale family farming. So those are, those are the issues that we really are facing collectively. The answers that we believe in are based on a system that needs to be changed. All the recent reports, including the IPBES report on the biodiversity collapse, say very clearly we need system change. So system change means we really need agroecology, which is mentioned in the IPBES report. We need a more socially inclusive system, which is something that we work on deeply within community supported agriculture. We also need to work collectively with the other social movements, which we do at all the regional levels through the different collectives organized under the social movement banner. So these really link into pillar five and pillar six most clearly of the action plan, but also link into almost all of the SDGs. SDG 12 on sustainable production and consumption, of course. SDG two, which is the overarching aspect here that we're talking about, but also because community supported agriculture is very biodiverse. Most CSA producers will have 50, 60 or more different kinds of things growing on their farms and use agroecology. This means that we are fighting against climate change and we are ensuring that the biodiversity of peasant seeds, which are also more nutritious, are really being maintained. So the other aspect that is really important here is the social inclusion is not only for the producers, it is also for the public. We are working together collectively through other channels and using the existing instruments like connecting smallholders to markets, working on local public procurement as well in school feeding programs, and uh, ensuring the social inclusion happens through a number of different mechanisms in our network to include low income people as well as those who maybe have a little bit more finance because it must be a socially inclusive system and we work also with local authorities in many cases. 
So the access to land is really important. In our network, we have a majority of young people, young producers. We have many women producers. So we also work on youth and women's issues very deeply through, but quite naturally in that way. And the nutritional aspects, if you read the different recent reports like the Lancet report and the report published recently in France on the incidence of cancer linked to uh, agroecological organic diet, I think that those are all of the, the elements that really link into the different pillars, as well as many more. <laughs> I think that communication is essential because the press tends to report only on negative things. I think we also need to speak about our success stories about how agroecology and one of the 10 elements of agroecology, which is solidarity economy, can achieve much more social inclusion, can achieve much deeper, decent livelihoods for the producers and accessible food for the consumers that is really healthy and nutritious. In terms of our network communication, we use many different methods. We use Facebook, we use press releases, we have our website, but also as a collective, the Nieleni Europe Facilitation Committee, we also communicate as a regional social movement network. So I think that communication is key and I think that we will be communicating about the decade of family farming with possibly with a press release after these three days. I think the key, one of the key challenges is how to implement existing policy instruments. We have some excellent ones. We have, for example, connecting smallholders to markets which means local and territorial markets, which is where most small scale family farmers and peasant agriculture have their markets, but also not just farmers, but fishers. Because in our network, we have not only community supported agriculture, but also community supported fisheries, because the, the issues are the same and to build the direct connection between food producers and consumers is a critical issue for the future.